take a look at page four. We're going to describe orally the issues related to water as a resource using academic vocabulary such as water resource, renewable, non-renewable resources, water shortages, and human consumption. So you're gonna do your very best to talk about what you've already learned. For this particular mini task that we did today it was to see what their basic knowledge is. But this will actually flow into um, what are the problems that um, we face with water today on our planet and um, ultimately finding solutions to how to solve those issues. So we're gonna actively think right now. And actively thinking means what? Are we just sitting there like a bump on a log? No. no. We are doing what? We're actively thinking, meaning what am I gonna write? What should I talk about? What are some really interesting things that I could write down, okay? Using the following questions in my quick write, okay, about my knowledge of water. So things like, this one's easy. How do you use water in your everyday life? That's easy. So this one's an interesting question. This one is kind of hard. Who owns water, okay? And last but not least, how would life change if a water shortage became a crisis? And a crisis means that what, what's going on? If there's a crisis, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. like it's everywhere. I'm gonna give you three minutes and I know some people have already started writing. That's totally fine because I know you have a lot to say. So how do you use it in your everyday life? Who do you think owns water? And what would you do if there was a water shortage crisis? How would you change? So on your marks. This mini task supports the larger goals of the module because it engages students in the problem right away. And we wanted students to connect to the problem and understand that it's a relevant problem to them. Finish up your last thought. Put your correct punctuation. Read through your work. This module connects to a really important disciplinary core idea in science, which is the idea that um, as human consumption of natural resources increases, so does the negative impact on the environment, unless we engineer ways to lessen that impact. We wanted students to really grapple with those ideas, engage into the problem, and then come up with solutions on their own. Water is important to learn about because we need it to survive. Well, water is what we drink. We have to take care of it or else we're not going to be able to drink anything. Also, animals need water and plants. We need to know how to keep a limit if there's a drought or something, because if we don't, if we don't have water, we can die. So here's what I would like you to do. Go ahead and push your chair in, stand behind your chair. And what I would like you to do is I want you to find a partner. Now you cannot partner with the same person you were with before. If you are too close to another set of partners, that means that you should not be able to touch elbows with that second set of people. So move to your own bubble. So I want you to look up here at the board and I'm gonna look with you, okay? So everybody's looking here, okay? We're gonna split into two groups, okay? One group will stand in a circle facing outward, which if you look here, the A's are in the center and they will probably be facing out. Person B, you're gonna stand with your partner, but you're gonna be facing towards the center of the circle. And what this is going to involve is a conversation between you and your partner about a question that you see. There is a sentence stem, meaning like how you should start your sentence out, when you're having that conversation with your partner. Question number one, where are the water shortages most likely to occur and explain why you think this? So right now, I want you to face toe to toe with your partner and I'm gonna be watching to see who's doing a very mature job of answering this question. On your marks, 30 seconds, get set, go. Water shortages are most likely to occur in deserts, deserts because there's not that much water or in poor countries because not many people could afford it. Um, where a water shortage will occur is somewhere where it's not close to the ocean. Because so one of the things that I look for um, with students who are collaborating is um, number one, are they actively listening to each other? Are they uh, talking about um, the issue or the question that has been put in front of them? Are they adding on to what somebody else has said? Um, are they able to repeat maybe what somebody else said and maybe add to their ideas? 
So there's lots of like little things that I can look for to see um, how well they're actually listening to their partners or their group that they're working with uh, to see if they're actually collaborating with each other on that. Letter B, I want you to raise your left hand. Letter B, lay, raise your left hand, okay? So letter B, I want you to point to the next person over to your left. Point to that person. So you're pointing to this person right here. Point to her. Okay. I want you to move to that next person on the count of three. One, two, three, go. In DPS, we consider um, collaborative okay? discussions a matter of educational equity. Many of our students are second language learners and it's really important for them to engage in academic conversations because it supports their language acquisition. It's bad for you because you'll never know if they put something to the water so it could like get us sick. I could be like really hot because like the inner core is like boiling hot. It's so also if we think bigger picture, we're preparing students for college and career and life outside of school. Being able to communicate with other people and collaborate with other people is a really important lifelong skill. It helps you learn because you get to know everyone else's ideas, you not just yours, so you, they could help you add ideas to your own statement or you could help them add, it, add ideas to their own statement. I think water is a scarce resource because like nowadays like they do have like machines that could purify salt water, but I feel like that if they do, there still could be a bit of salt left. I think that water is a scarce resource because uh, there's, there's half of the world discovered in water, but it's salt water and we can't drink The part that was fun of today was when we did the circle. And we were going around and talking and you, you got to see different ideas of other people. I like that I get to like um, see somebody else's perspective of it, not just my own. It's important because if I just like see out of only my eyes, then I wouldn't understand um, what other people, why other people think this or why they think that. Because I would just be thinking about what I think. I wouldn't care about what they think. When we first started doing the LDC modules, um, one of the big shocks for us was um, the literacy content itself. It's very challenging um, and, and at first you know I was very hesitant about oh my gosh how are we going to get through this how are we going to move through this yeah sometimes it's going to be hard but you're going to be okay because you're going to be able to work through it turn to your partner high five them and tell them they are brilliant have a seat